Hi everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Janis, I'm a musician and producer and in this video I want to show you how you can use your Nord Drum 3P as a drum computer, meaning that it will receive all the musical information via MIDI from your computer or more specifically your DAW and in my case or in this case for the video it will be Ableton Live. It will be possible without any additional software because there are some editors that you can buy for controlling the parameters of the Nord from your DAW, which are super cool, but I want to show you what you can actually do without those by just setting it up by yourself. And you will need either the standard or the sweet version of Ableton Live. And you may also ask yourself why you would actually do such a thing. In my opinion, there are two practical situations where it can be super either helpful or also inspiring because it gives you some additional set of creative tools that you can use in order to come up with some very cool ideas. So the first example would be that you really want to focus on sound design but get a little annoyed by always having to play a pad at the same time. And it's particularly annoying because you sometimes need to press the shift key, which can be quite a stretching exercise for your fingers. The second example would be that you have a great idea for a beat with some particular sounds of the Nord drum, but you just can't play it by yourself. And in this case you can program the beat inside your DAW and send it to the Nord drum and even have your hands free for eventually just manipulating the sound every now and then. So in order to set up a connection between your Nord drum and the DAW, you need a MIDI connection. And you can do so via a MIDI USB adapter or by using MIDI cables and just the MIDI in and output of your audio interface in case it has such in and outputs. Just make sure that MIDI in goes into MIDI out and vice versa. This is like the most important thing you have to watch out when you connect those cables. And now I'm going to show you how you can set it up in Ableton Live. So at some other door it might be a little different and you have to check for similar devices and I can't guarantee that it works, but I'm going to show to you how it works in Ableton Live and I can guarantee you that it actually works perfectly fine this way. So after opening Ableton Live you need to create a MIDI track and most of the time you already have some MIDI track here just by default by your first template otherwise you just right click and insert MIDI track or command shift and T. And then you open this left side menu and under instruments you can find external instrument and this one you just double click and so you load this one to the track and then for the MIDI 2 you have to select your your kind of MIDI connector, which is either your audio interface, in my case it would be the audio fuse. It has MIDI in and outputs, but I'm not using it for this video because I also have some USB MIDI interface, so that's what I'm going to pick here. And then you also have to select your sound input because you need to still you need still need to send the sound of the Nord drum to your interface. So just select whatever you have, and in my case it's input three and four. And from this point on, there are two ways of how you can work and I'm just going to show them both to you, although I think one of them is way more convenient and also fun in terms of what you can actually do with it. And now we also have to go to our pad and access the MIDI menu and you find it under Shift and MIDI. And then, I don't know if global will pop up first, otherwise you have to press it a couple of times until you see this menu with GL, which means global. And for this first example, it, we're going to just select a channel. You can probably on your pad, some channel will be selected already. And for this example, we'll just pick global channel one and go back from this menu because now if we select channel one here, which is also the first one that is selected, it will send signals to the pad through MIDI channel number one. And if we open, double click in one of those fields here and just open some MIDI clip, we can see that if I now just play some note, it receives some signal on the note that you can see here flashing up, same here and here and so on. And now you could actually just mark all those notes. So you see you have this one, you have this one, this one, this one, and there will be another option if you already think like, oh my god, this is really complicated, but I just want to show you how you can make it. 
Also, memorize that you once you've set it up once, you can always go back to some template you can save after setting all of this up, which I'm also going to show you. It, MIDI stuff can always be a bit fiddly, but once you have it established as some template, you will never think about it again. Also, the Nord is always going to save your MIDI settings, so this is like a one-time setup thing. And so now, if you go to Fold, you just have all those six pads that you actually use. The only thing is that you have to memorize which is what because um, those things you can't rename so it's a little annoying and um, but this way you just have it on one channel and can now start just building your beats with all those six pads that the Nordrum has and it will react to it. Maybe just one quick example of a beat. So let's have the kick drum and snare. I played this typical beat, maybe some offbeat hi-hat, and in the end, some tiny fill. Oh. I mixed up the tom and the hi-hat now, but it sounds kind of cool. And so now, yeah, you can just have this running and just manipulate the parameters while this just keeps playing forever. And if you think of how can you actually record it, it's uh, what I'm going to show you after showing you this other approach of using the MIDI connection. So for now, let's delete this clip again and go back to this external instrument because there's another way you can do. And if you press again on the pad shift and the MIDI menu and you actually turn this knob until it says off, just switch the global MIDI channel off now. That means um, it won't receive, um, like all those pads won't receive a signal anymore unless they have some specific channel assigned to any individual pad. And that's what you can do by pressing shift exit, uh, not exit, shift and MIDI again and press it again. And then you see here channel. And for example, you can then just go through the individual pads. I did it already, otherwise you can just change the parameter here. And so you see pad 1 is channel 1, then there's channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, channel 5, and channel 6 for all those three pads, all those six pads. And that means we have to create some individual channel for all of them, which is kind of a hassle, but again, if you will save those as a template, you can easily go back to it and we can exit this one here. And so for example, now if I insert another MIDI track with an external instrument and the output set to channel two, it's going to send MIDI to the second pad. And you only have to select the audio from for one of those because otherwise you're just doubling or tripling the signal and then you quickly get distortion. So just um, do it for the first one maybe. You just have to, to just still keep kind of notice of uh, where you are. It's again, this MIDI thing can be a little intimidating at first, but once you appreciate the possibilities, it's kind of cool. And we can already name this one kick because now you see if I program a clip and it doesn't even matter which note I do, <laughs> you have something and you notice now it sounds really high for a kick because now we can actually also alter the pitch, which is kind of amazing because now you could use the Nordrum as some six voice polyphonic sequencing, or not sequencing device, but some device that plays polyphonically six different melodies that you program because now you can just play or program all chromatic melodies and the main one is always on C3. That's something that you should remember. So. The C3 is always the initial pitch that is just selected by the Nord drum itself. And if you go up or down, you will just alter it as if you would use the pitch button. And this is super cool because now you can even have some tiny melodic bass drum, although you would need another kick probably, but just to show you what happens if I do this. And this is possible for all six individual pads. And if you just select, just make one for all of them, so this would be the snare, 
And you would have now a second individual track for just the snare. Let's start with some simple one, because as I said, C3 is always the basic note. <laughs> You see, you get lots of interesting sounds already just by using one pad. And now we could do the same again, create a MIDI channel, the external instrument, and USB MIDI interface. And now it's channel three, which is the hi-hat pad. And I'll say hi-hat. And now you can also, for example, for the hi-hat, have the 16th note hi-hat, but um, altering in pitch, which gives it some kind of glitchy feeling. So that's what you can do here and you see you can really have fun with it but you can also stay simple and just use those individual tracks to have it in a more visual way because I show, I've shown you if you have it on one external instrument track it can be a bit messy because then you just see the note names and you have to remember what is what and here if you know okay you just have C3 and then also you can fold it you just have your kick drum here that's all you need and the same for the snare, once you have C3, you can fold it and just program your snare beat. And the same then also for the hi-hat, because let's do it again. Um, if you play it now, you can perfectly listen to it. And the same would be now for the other three pads, but I'm just not going to do it for this video to not make it too long. To just give you the idea how you can use this, and it's actually really fun. And C3, if you want to stick to the original sound, otherwise just go wild with whatever possibilities of creating melodies or pitch variation the way I've shown you. And for saving this, as I mentioned, the knot will save your MIDI settings. So this is some nice thing. So if you use the similar pad layout for whatever drums you use this will never change although sometimes maybe if you then open another kit where you have another pad layout or just organize things in another way you may have to change something this is something you need to be aware of but if you always have the same system for kick snare hi-hat and some additional stuff you can perfectly now save it with this symbol and then you just call it however so in this case it's Nord kick right and so you have it in the it saves it under your presets folder and so now also if you open instruments and external instruments you see Nord kick and so now all the time you just need to open this one and you can do the same with the snare and the hi-hat and never have to worry about this again so if you just needed to know how you can send information to the pad and then you want to manipulate the sound that's actually all you need to know and you can start right away with uh, doing so. But there's probably also quite a chance that you want to record the sounds and right now we only have MIDI channels. So we have to make a system of recording those sounds. And you can just create some audio track and then send the audio from this channel, not to the master, but to the, let's actually call this drum sum <laughs> weird name but yeah let's keep keep it this way and you call drum you pick drum sum here and here you don't select any input you have to make sure the monitoring works and now you see that actually this one is the master of the kind of sound that comes from the nord and this by itself doesn't work if this one is deselected in this way you can record just the stereo output of the Nord drum. You could also make some audio track and select input 3 and 4 of course, but sometimes you may face some tiny delay there and I always made better experiences with just sending it from this one that receives the signal to some additional channel. Maybe it's different for you, but that's just something I share from my personal experience and I like to do. And if you want to record the individual parts, you have to make sure it's a little more hassly again. So let's say we want to start with a kick. 
So you just play the kick and record it here. Then you stop the clips again, make a new audio track, this time for the snare. And this one now goes to snare, of course, and you have to make sure. You see, again, it's a little hassly, but um, once it's set up, it's fun. Now you see here the snare is received. You can record it. Now you hear it has this, I just picked the first kit here, it has this reverb that is kind of annoying sometimes and that's why you hear this weird reverb tail. But um, you get the, the idea. Now you can actually stop this one again and just um, play those two. Oh, those two I mean. You can see probably I still also have some latency here because I um, am just using some setting right now that doesn't allow me to hear it in real time anyway because it's with some different routings also for recording the screen. A little messy, but I, um, if you have some latency issues, yeah, always just check the preferences and hear your samples. Actually, that's totally fine for me right now. Um, but since I'm using this USB MIDI adapter, I think it's also a little older, but I wanted to use it for this example. Um, there might be a little latency by this thing it itself and also or because I'm sending it through a hub. And you have some designated setting here as well for some compensation that you can play with. But um, just try to work with those things if you have the feeling that something is not as tight. Right now, I think it's because of my USB MIDI interface that I don't use anymore, but I wanted to use for this video. Otherwise, I would use the input of my audio fuse, but um, it's connected to something else right now and I didn't want to mess with it. But um, this way, it also is totally fine if you just send it out because um, if, it, if you don't have to play anything in real time, you can, you can deal with this perfectly. It's just if you have to play it, then it becomes a bit messy or if it's synced with something else. But just check those settings I was showing you because it also depends on just your setup and how, what kind of latencies you have. It's a large topic, but just those are the settings where you have to check if you have the feeling anything with lat latency related is a little messy. So yeah, this way you can just record those individual parts and there would also be the possibility that you sample it because now you can also, for example, sample just one single hit, for example, of the bass drum, the kick drum. You can also zoom in here with the plus, make sure to perfectly hit the first point. And now you just have a, it's actually a kick sample that you could also crop, actually if you go to crop sample, you just have a kick sample now that you could, if you open another MIDI track and add a drum rack, for example, now you could add this kick sample to the drum rack and it immediately opens the sampler. So now you just sampled your Nord drum and can use those sounds perfectly inside a drum rack and be a bit more flexible with it. So you don't have to record everything as it is immediately. So these are just the ways of kind of having a workflow of recording stuff, also maybe saving stuff because though you could also just create a folder so maybe you want to go to your user library and just save it under your samples, like in my sample pack folder, as I called it, and you just have to give it a proper name before and you can just collect samples this way. And it's kind of handy because otherwise you always have to start the Nord and program the specific things. But this way you can be more flexible and also can use the sounds in the future. Also, if you found a very nice sound, you can just recall it and have some nice selection of your own sounds. And that's it for this video. I really hope you got some bits of inspiration on what you can actually do with the Nordrum 3P as a standalone sound engine and what kind of possibilities you get and how you can most importantly just use it creatively and maybe find some additional sounds or possibilities to add to your music. 
And if that's the case, be warmly invited to click that like button and also to subscribe to this channel because you can find more content here about the Nordram 3P. And also I'm going to produce more content about the Nordram 3P in the future. Also be known that I made a full class about learning drums specifically with the Nordram 3P on the platform Skillshare and you can try it one month for free with the link that you will find down below in the description. So no strings attached and you're warmly invited to check this out because it can really help you to develop some more refined technique and to just get a little more independent on the drum pit so you can just play more things and feel more free to express yourself. Otherwise, I wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and of course would be really happy to meet you soon again at this channel. Bye!